Welcome back to part four. So we're going to be casting those missing resin parts in this episode. So there's a lot of stuff out in front of me at the minute. I'm not going to be using it all at the same time, but I will be using two types of resin to cast these parts. I need these to be in translucent clear, these two, and this can just be in standard opaque resin. And to do that, I've got two different types from two different manufacturers. Now that's not on purpose. It just happens to be what I've got on hand at the moment. But it's useful because I can show you um, the differences between the two. Um, similarly, with the rubber that you saw in the last episode, if you watched that, um, the mixing ratios, you have to be careful depending on the type of resin um, and the manufacturer and all the rest of it. So again, like always double check the documentation and the labels uh, and make sure you know what you're mixing, volume or weight or you know the rest of it. So... Just as a real quick intro to this stuff, I'm going to be using the Smoothcast 326EU polyurethane. Now this stuff, um, technically it, it cures as an amber clear plastic, but they call it their colour match line because the idea is that you use tints and other stuff to get um, like a cured plastic which matches the colour that you're after rather than just... A predetermined color usually resins when they cure opaque like resins at least when they cure they're either a white or an off-white or sort of a, um, a creamy color and you can't dictate that but with this line of resins you can use in their line of um, tints and like mixing up your own shades of plastic basically the reason I use this stuff is because if you use a tiny drop of white in it, it actually turns it translucent. If you just use an absolutely tiny amount, it's, it doesn't tint it enough to turn it white, but it does sort of smoke the plastic and fog the plastic. It works really well. Um, moving on to the Polycraft, this is their SG2000. Same stuff. It's both these resins are polyurethane. Um, this stuff... When it uh, cures, it's off-white ivory, as it says on the label. If you can see that at the bottom near my thumb. And um, this stuff cures really quickly. It's got really short pot life. This stuff takes quite a lot longer. And that's intentional because I need to pressure cast these. To get bubble-free castings when you're using urethanes, you need to pressure cast it. doesn't matter if it's opaque because the bubbles are all inside. But if you need to uh, cast a clear part you need to use a pressure casting system and let the rub it let the urethane cure under pressure so um yeah this stuff can go off really quick doesn't matter because i'm not worried about the bubbles but this stuff i need time to get it in the pressure pot after i've mixed it and all the rest of it so you need a bit longer of a pot life right first things first uh we need to cast up one of these or probably a couple maybe it might take a couple to get a really good part and I need to clean out this mold. So the quickest way to do that is just to mix in some of this resin and pull the part out when it's cured and it will bring all of that dirt and green remnants from the master. It will bring all that stuff out with the part. I can throw that part away and then use the smooth cast stuff to get the actual translucent part out of it. So uh, I'm going to be using this Polycraft SG2000 like I just said a few minutes, a few seconds ago. Now this stuff is mixed one to one by weight. It's equal parts by weight. Um, so you need to get yourself some accurate scales, some um, gram scales and some mixing cups. I've got some spray release. I'll come on to that in a sec. And I've got some baby powder. Again, I'll come on to that in a sec. So first things first is uh, just going to open up this mold and tip a load of this baby powder in the mold i don't have to worry about it being neat or anything i just need to get some baby powder in there or talc depending on what side of the ocean you're on and i'm just going to get my brush and make sure that the baby powder is down in all of the spaces and the voids in the mold it's quite difficult to do with this mold because the rubber is fairly stiff um but you get the idea so i'm just throwing all of this powder in there and once it's in everywhere all the cracks and crevices i'm just gonna tip it out like that 
below the excess. Now, if you look down into the mould, I don't know if you can see it. There's talc or baby powder all over it. Now, that baby powder is going to help me get a, um, casts out of this thing without any bubbles on the surface. Um, when urethane cures, it's an exothermic chemical reaction and it actually creates bubbles while it's curing. So even if you've got no bubbles or you've stirred it, when you start to see it kick off, you'll, you'll see it starting to form its own bubbles. Um, hence the reason it needs to be pressure cast if you're doing clear parts. Now, I don't want any of those bubbles to be forming on the surface of my part. I don't care if they're inside, really, but I don't want them on the surface of the part because then it means I've got stuff to fix later. By putting baby powder in there, uh, it stops that from happening. I think it's like a capillary action or it breaks the surface tension or something like that. I'm not sure. Some chemical magic goes on anyway. And it, the, the baby powder stops those bubbles from forming on the surface of the part. So, uh, obviously I don't want big piles of powder sitting in anywhere because then I'll have a void when the part comes out and the powder will just crumble. So, make sure there's no voids in there. So, that's good. Um, now it's always good to brace the side of the mould because when I when you wrap these things in like mould clamps or elastic bands or whatever you're using, you want it to kind of be equal um, tension around the mould and it always helps if you've got something stiff on the sides of it to help accomplish that so there we go that mould's ready to go so uh, obviously this is just an open face mould no prep for that needed uh, you can spray some mould release if you want but I don't want to do that I need it to pull all that stuff out with the part so I'm just going to leave that as is um, so now onto the mixing hope I'm not going to block you too much. I'm going to try not to knock the uh, camera either. So I'm going to take a mixing cup, switch it up, switch on our scales. You may or may not be able to see the actual readout, but I just have to take my word for it. Um, this stuff, you want to give it a good shake before you use it to make sure that the uh, um, constituent chemicals haven't settled in layers. It shouldn't have done, but you know it's always best to give it a shake. I've already shaken these. And I've left it stand to let as many bubbles as I can sort of dissipate in the mix. Uh, right, so I have no idea how much resin this is going to take or this. So I'm just going to have to best guess the volume and pay attention to what weight I'm putting in. So um, you don't want to cross contaminate these because it will start to catalyze in the bottle. If I if I mix the syringes up, you notice I've got A and B on the syringes. If I use the A or the same syringe to take some material out of here and then material out of the B, it will start to uh, catalyze in the bottle and that's it, I've, I've, I'm done then, I've ruined that batch. So always label up your syringes and try not to mix them up. Uh, it's always a good idea to get some tissue on hand because casting can be a bit messy. Let's see if I can draw some of this up out of this bottle. Hopefully the syringe is long enough. Right, so that's way more than I need. So I'm just going to start putting this in here and get to like a whole measurement. I'm going to go. Seven grams. Put the lid back on. Right, I've gone seven grams the A, so uh, when I add the B, I'm going to make that up to 14 grams. Before I do that, just one quick step that I forgot. I'm going to be syringing this resin in. Once I've mixed it, I'm going to draw it up into this syringe. Get the syringe in the pour spout and drive it down through into the mould until I see it come up that vent. Um, now, I want to reuse this syringe as much as possible because I hate throwing stuff away. Is just give this a quick spray with some mould release up there. And just on the plunger. And then when the resin sets, the excess resin, when it sets in there, I should just be able to break it free and get it out. Right, so I've got to load in that syringe. Now this resin has got a really, really quick pot life. What's it say on here? 
two to three minutes and a demold of 30 to 60 minutes so that's not a lot of time once i've got this in i've got to get it mixed really thoroughly and really quickly then draw it into the syringe get it injected and poured into there and believe me those two or three minutes are going to go real quick so when you're doing this make sure you've got everything in ducks in a row you know what you're doing so you can just get on and do the job real quick so i'm just going to tear the scales right, i'll need another set oh one thing that i forgot hold on a sec little lollipop stick very important so seven grams here we go seven grams clocks ticking so I need to get this stirred up really well similarly how it was with the rubber make sure it's all mixed properly it's harder to tell because it's much more viscous and there's no real indicator like the rubber you could see if it was marbled or anything like that you can't really tell with resins so get it going that should be plenty now this stuff is going to start warming up as it's setting and as it's curing and even now just then i can feel the cup warming up which means this the, it's already going so i've got to get this done as quick as i can so i'll pop that in there i hope you can see this and i'm going to start driving the plunger And there we are put the rest in there there we are you see the resin drop down out away i hope you saw that so i'm just encouraging the bubbles to come out and up to the top Now, there's a lot of waste there but that's fine so now it's just a waiting game got to wait for this resin to cure and properly kick off and when it cures you'll see it go kind of all of a sudden it will start going cloudy and milky right so you might be able to tell you can see it's going cloudy in the middle there that's the chemical re reaction kicking off and turning the liquid into a plastic now, the thing with this stuff is the thicker cross section the quicker the reaction so the thinner parts take a lot longer to set and cure that's why this one's going off really quick and this one not so much but you can start to see it changing color see it going white there in the middle of that poor stub so there you go i mean you get resins that go off even quicker like you literally have like 60 seconds to get it in before it starts to go off so there we go that's resin casting pretty basic pretty simple stuff you just got to, once you've done it a few times and you know the routine it's nothing to be too worried about um so yeah it can be a, bit, a, little, a little bit messy and you have to make sure you've got everything prepared before you actually start but pretty straightforward stuff so i encourage you all to give it a go if you haven't done done so already so there we go once this is all cured we'll get the molds open or this particular mold open anyway and we'll pop that out and we'll see what we got so see in a few seconds right that's been about i should say 10 15 minutes it's plenty long enough now to at least pop this waste part out and see what we got so we just ease it off around the edge it's looking nice and clean already from what i can see there we go so it's pretty much taken all of the green bits with it can't see any more you can see it's caught all the detail if the camera will focus it's caught all the detail quite nicely there's a little bubble every now and again but like i say it doesn't matter because this isn't the part i'm using and when i pressure cast that won't be an issue um i've cleaned out the syringe it is the same syringe just in case you think i'm cheating you can see there's bits of plastic all over it that's that's uh, cured uh, it popped out pretty easily 
Um, so that spray release worked really well. So you can reuse your syringes if you so wish. And this part, I think we'll try and demold it now. It should come out all right. And we'll see what we've got bubble wise. Hopefully it's a good part and job done in the first pull, but these things don't generally work that way. It's probably going to need one or two cracks at this. So just break this excess off, make it easier to open the mold. There we go. So let's see what we got. Gently work the mold open. Like that. Let's see if we can pull the part up and out. There you go. You see that? That's not actually too bad. There's a couple of voids there. Bloody camera. There's a couple of bubbles there. Um, so not too bad. Definitely not what you know, don't need to throw this away. So I'll put this to one side and let it cure. Seam wise, it's really good, much better than I was expecting, considering the hack job I did cutting that mold. Uh, you just see it there, very light. I mean, that will come off just scraping it with my finger, even don't even need to take the gloves off. So that's good stuff. Yeah, good, happy with that. So I'll keep this one and we'll see. We'll, put, we'll pour another one anyway. And we've got a couple of options then, which one's best. So that's not, a, that's those tiny little bubbles aren't a big issue. I bet you can't even see them. That's not a big issue. I can deal with those if I need to, but you'll get another one out anyway, just in case, just to cover the bases. So pretty good. Uh, so it's just going to be rinse and repeat. No point filming it and showing you. Uh, I'll come back when I'm starting to play around with the smooth cast and getting some translucent parts molded. So yeah, let's move on to that while uh, while I deal with this. Right, let's deal with these translucent clear parts. The Smoothcast 326 is a bit easier for me to deal with at least. Your mileage may vary, but I find it easier to work with this stuff because they mix it straight equal parts by volume rather than messing around by weight. If you look at the label, you can do it by weight, but you can see how complicated it's going to get pretty quickly because you have to work out how much different the weight is depending on what you're casting so like you know working out that ratio is, is it's not <laughs> it's not straightforward so just mixing it one to one by volume is a lot easier to deal with um so like i said i'm going to get this stuff mixed up i'm going to tint it with some of this this is their so strong white tint and basically you just need a tiny amount on the end of a cocktail stick or something just to fog and milk the um, the resin up a little bit so when it cures it's translucent and not dead clear. I could cast these perfectly water clear but then I have to diffuse them with something so you don't get the LED hot spots but casting it with the translucent you know with a bit of that white in there to make it translucent then there's no more diffusion necessary it's just a case of throwing the lights in behind whatever you're trying to light so it makes it much easier. Um, right so Let's just get on with this. Same sort of deal as before, other than I'm not having to worry about weighing anything, so there's no scales. I'm just going to take measurements by mil. Again, I have no idea what these take. It's not a great deal. I would estimate probably three mil for this, maybe one or two mil for that. So, but I'm going to make too much because it's better to have a little bit too much than not enough um, and get them into the pressure pot. So you're not going to be able to see me get it into the pressure pot, unfortunately, because the camera's in a fixed position. And once this stuff is mixed, I need to get it moving into the pressure pot as quick as possible. Let's take some of this out. Let's just get some syringed out. Um, got it up to 5 mil. I'm not going to use all that 5 mil. What, what, what should we say? Let's do 6 mil. So total. So I want 3 mil of this. Let's see what this push it out until we've got three mil in the syringe. Right, it's three mil in the syringe now, so barely enough to cover the bottom of that cup, <laughs> which is gonna be problematic for mixing it, but we'll get it. You know what? Let's go 10 mil total, because it's just gonna be easier to deal with. So I need another two mil, so push the plunger down to the two mil mark. 
All right, now we've got five mil total in there. Give that a wipe. All right, let's put this lid back on. Put it to one side. Right. Uh, so basically, you mix your your um, tin into the B, and I'm literally just going to dirty the end of this with a tiny amount. You see, there's more on my fingers than there's on that cocktail stick. That tiny little bit there is more than enough. So I'm just going to, I don't know if you can see that, I'm just sort of wiping it around, trying to get some off into the resin there. Clean the excess off. Cocktail stick, right, get me stir stick. And I'm gonna to try to mix this tiny amount of resin and try to show you what's going on. Can you see it's sort of milky, it's turning it milky? That tiny, tiny amount of pigment is more than enough to tint this, this small amount of resin. Make sure it's nice and mixed up because I don't want marbling in the cured resin. Make sure it's nice and evenly distributed. There we go. Let's give that a sec for it to settle back down off the sides of the little coffee cup, milk cup thing there. This tint gets everywhere so just be careful what you're doing with it because it does go everywhere. Right, get the catalyst. Again, like you've you probably noticed, I'm, I'm using a separate syringe for each part, clearly marked, and I'm not mixing them up because I don't want to catalyze and contaminate both bottles with you know their counterpart. So that's very important. Right, up to five mil. Inject it in, and there we go. Clock's ticking again. Well, it's less hectic because this stuff is, isn't really going to start to kick off for about three or four minutes, and then it's going to take seven or eight minutes to really start to gel anyway. And by that time, it will, it will have gone into the pressure pot well before. So, again, just making sure it's nice and mixed, nice and evenly. It's going to make a mess pouring into that sidewall mould because it's very thin. And there's not a lot of space for the liquid to get down into it. Right, there we go. So I'll just pour it down into here. Now I'm pouring it down off the stick, I hope you can see, because then it, I'm controlling where that stream is going and it's not pouring down the bottom of this container and going everywhere. So that should be enough for that. And let's see if I can get some in here without it spilling everywhere. Okay. I'm just gonna sort of squeeze the mold a little bit. Let's see if I can get my hand out of the way. Just sort of squeezing the mould, try and encourage the resin to get everywhere and any air bubbles that might be trapped. I can get out of the way. And there we go. Right, so now it's a, I can't show you this, I apologise, but now it's a case of just putting them over into the pressure pot. All right, so there we go. They're in the pot now. Up to 30 PSI. You Maybe you'll remember from the previous video in this series that's the same pressure that I cured their rubber molds at so everything's equalized and if there were any rub any uh, air bubbles in those molds then um, they would have been crushed while the rubber was curing and likewise any bubbles that are trying to form while that reaction is going off in the resin right now is being they're being crushed by that pressure so um, the pot life on these is like nine or ten minutes seven nine minutes something like that whatever I said earlier. So once we've gone past that point, 
the pressure can be released but I just I just tend to leave it until I'm ready to demold in a couple of hours anyway so that's what we'll do we'll leave them in there and they can deal with themselves and I'm going to open up this second mold and see if we've got another good chiller grill part so let's deal with that shall we all right let's get this mold open and see what we've got hopefully we've got another good part uh, if not we'll just use the first one that came out of the mold um, surprisingly enough it came out pretty good usually it takes a couple of attempts to get a good part because um, sometimes there's stuff sitting in the mold that you don't see or you know you're a little bit haphazard with how you're putting the resin in and you catch bubbles and you need to sort of change your approach a little bit but uh, got lucky on the first one so no big deal if this one doesn't turn out but let's just see anyway so again just going to really gently ease the mold open feels like it's letting go easier on the second time which is usually the way as well first part is always a little bit tricky to get out there we go left a little bit of a sprue in there but that doesn't matter fair amount of flash in the uh, nastily cut mold but that's to be expected and oh we've got a little bit of rubber in there it's just again that's just where i cut it really badly so if i do need to cast another one then it means that it will be a little bit different but never mind i don't think i'll be using this mold again good very good no problems perfect so good the mold has done its job so that might seem like a lot of work just to get one part but believe me you know to sit there and try and scratch build a second one of these or a pair it's just you know it's a non-starter for me it's much more simple to do this because if need be i can just keep casting more if i need to get more you know if i break one i can i can cast another if i screw the paint up i can cast another you know there's a lot of benefits to doing this uh, so there's our original and now I have two good copies first one out of the mold and the second one so it doesn't really matter which one I use I guess I think the, the second one has definitely got less bubbles on it by the looks of it so that one can disappear and I'll use this one it's not fully cured yet although it's hard and de you know it's able to be demolded it's still what they say they call it green or in in the beers it's called green but basically it means it's just it's not finished its um curing process yet it's a little bit flexible so uh it's going to take a couple of hours for that to get really nice and hard so i'm going to put these to the side let them do their thing and that'll do it for this part of it anyway until at least those translucent parts are cured but that's going to take a couple of hours so um for me it'll be a couple of hours but for you it'll be a few seconds so i'll see you for that bit in a sec so it's been a couple of hours parts are out of the pressure casting pot they're probably a little bit green still but only in like the really thin sections so not to worry i think it was good to pop them out of the mold and see what we got so just gently peel the rubber off from around the edge and pop her up and there we go pretty good from what I can see it's got that nice translucent milky look if I hadn't put that tint in there it would just be sort of clear clear amber and as you can see there are no bubbles bubble free you can see there's um, a lot of uh, sort of surface stuff going on along that uh, rim but that's fine I'll just take a bit of sandpaper and thin that all down anyway so that was as expected um, so that should transmit the light really nicely so I'm happy about that so yeah um, if I hadn't a pressure cast this this thing would be like Swiss cheese at the minute it would like be a honeycomb it would be so full of bubbles it would look like it was made out of foam and that's like I said earlier that's purely down to the chemical reaction that's going on and um, 
the uh, exothermic reaction causing all those bubbles to be generated. So that looks good. Good to me. I can use that part. So good to go. Let's see about getting this one out. This one's going to be a little bit uh, more fragile because it's just so thin. Um, it might still be quite flexible. So, but we'll see. The good thing about resin parts is if they warp over time, all you need to do is just warm them up in hot water, or give them, soak them in hot water or a hairdryer or something, let them get warm, and then you can bend them into sh back into shape and um, they they retain their shape. However, you sort of arrange them if it, you know, if that makes sense. So, I mean, you'll find that it's quite a, quite a common thing with resin kits. That parts have warped and out of shape um, it's just you know it's just part of the game so you just warm the pieces up in hot water straighten them out and let them cool down and then they stay where you left them so it's causing a bit of issues getting it out there we go out you pop come on there we go so there we go yeah it's still quite green Still quite bendy and flexible, so I'll leave this to one side and let it cure off all the way. But that's looking really good, exactly what I wanted. It's got that smoky, translucent look. So when I put some LED lights behind this, I shouldn't need to worry about any more diffusion to get rid of the hot spots of the LEDs. So job done, mission accomplished. So all that's left now then is to cast up. Ooh, what four or five more of these I think the kit needs six so I've got the original plus this so I'll cast up a few more of these um, I'll get yeah I think I will at the same time I'll pour in some um, clear resin into this and just leave it cured naturally without pressure casting it just so you've got a comparison so you can see what difference it makes uh, but other than that we are all done for the molding and casting part of this uh, series so I hope that was all valuable information and useful to you. you it might be stuff that you're already familiar with but you don't tend to see too much of this sort of thing on a lot of channels i've noticed so it's uh, i think it's good to introduce this sort of thing into the hobby because yeah 3d printing is widely available these days but i still think that um, doing it the old traditional techniques like this definitely still has its merits and i think really on balance Probably you can still accomplish it a lot quicker doing it this way than you can 3D printing and with less waste, I think, at the minute. Um, that's just my opinion anyway. But um, that's about it for now. So thanks for joining me and catch me on the next episode. And that will be back to the nuts and bolts of the actual commission build itself. So thanks a lot. I'll catch you later. See you soon.